P and Q have what? If P and Q have continuous continuous partial differential, continuous partial derivatives, right? Continuous partial derivatives, then we can use Green's theorem. So if they have continuous partial, and I'll go d d d d n. So continuous partial derivative of whatever, right? Then we can use this fact. We can transform this into double integral over some domain. So now we're not just going around a curve. We're integrating a domain, right? We're integrating an area using this double integral. And the formula goes like this. So it's going to be q with respect to x. So dq dx minus p dp dy and over dA. Right. You can think of it as opposites, right? That's how you can remember it. But that's Green's there right here. Okay. So let's actually use this to integrate. So Q, what is Q? Q is the second one, so Q is negative x cubed. Okay, and then what what dq dq dx, right? dq dx. Well, dq dx is the derivative of this with respect to x, which is negative 3x squared. Okay. That's all very useful. Um, well, what, what about the other part? Well, p, p is y cubed, right? Okay. And then we want dp dy. dp dy, which is what? It's going to be... 3y squared. Okay. So now let's apply this stuff into this formula and write the integral. So, hmm, what do we think? It goes dq dx, so this guy, minus this. And dA. We don't know what dA is yet. In fact, we haven't really defined our bounds. Let's define our bounds. So we can say that D, hmm, we want to describe this domain. What can we use? We can use polar, right? So D goes, it's in this R and theta plane. It's in our polar plane. If it's in our polar plane, well, we know that R goes from 0 to 2 because this is radius 2. So 0 to 2. And then this is a full circle, so it goes from 0 to 2 pi, right? Okay. So that's all good. Now we can rewrite this integral as, we'll factor out the negative 3, okay? If we factor out this negative 3, we got x squared minus y squared, and x squared plus y squared, my bad, if we factor out the negative 3, we get x squared plus y squared right here. But that's all equal to r squared, right? This is just our classic polar formula stuff that we know. So I'm going to put r squared here. And then since we're changing, we're transforming um, into different planes, we have our Jacobian, which is r. And we have, oh, my bad, I'll go right-handed here, dr. D theta. Okay. So now we're integrating in this dr and d theta plane, and this is our new integral. And what's our bounds here? Well, it would be 0 to what? To 2. And this would be from 0 to 2 pi. Okay. So this is a lot easier to do now, right? This is a much easier integral to do, and let's do it. Okay, so this is equal to, okay, the negative 3, the negative 3 can stay outside, right, so we're like that, and this is a r cubed, so first let's do this integral, just two to, 0 to 2 for r cubed, so if we integrate r cubed, 
what's that going to be? It's going to be r to the fourth divided by four. Okay. And I'll write it right here like this. R4 divided by 4 for what? For 2 to 0. Okay? So let's just plug this in real quick before we put it back into here. Okay, 2 to the power of 4 is what? It's 16. 16 divided by 4 is 4. Okay, so we get 4. Okay. So we have a 4 here. And then there is no theta term. There is no real theta term here. The only theta term is 1. So if you integrate two theta, if you integrate d theta, 1 d theta from 2 pi to 0, it's just 2 pi. Okay, um, quick warning. Uh, the fucking idiot you're watching. Okay. So uh, for some reason, he's going to keep saying. So we get negative, negative 24, 24 times 2 pi. pi. It's just negative 24 pi. Yeah, I don't know why I kept saying negative 24 times 2 pi when it's just and 24 all that. pi. That's your answer. So please don't get confused. Consider subscribing and liking if you found this video interesting or helpful. Leave a comment. Just leave any comment just so I could, uh, you know, get this video pushed up the algorithm.